We start this uh, live demonstration by showing that we use AppScan to scan a web application whose host name is uh, this one and that's the IP address and we use AppScan to actually scan such app and the results of that scan are actually sent into Curator as, as a database and we're gonna start by doing uh, a search of the vulnerabilities to indicate that you know what 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 things can be exploited on this particular application. So in Curator, we go to the vulnerability tabs and we search for vulnerabilities and we're going to create a search. And the parameters that we're going to be using for the search are the host name and those vulnerabilities found by ASK and as the scanner. So we found you know, there are actually the two are coincidentally close together. So the host name is uh, APPSRV2L. So we add that filter and we're going to select those that are, are found by scanner. Not Big Fix, not QVM, not even Guardian, but uh, actually AppScan. And when we do that, and we scroll down to click on the search button, we're going to see that apps can found a couple of vulnerabilities, for example, these uh, SQL injection ones. And we're going to see how the bad guy is going to try to actually explode those. Now, the bad guy also has some scanning tools. In this particular case, he's going to use SendMap. And he actually going to, is going to scan that Altoro application. And he also is going to realize that that application is vulnerable to SQL injection. See that Curator is going to be detecting those attempts for remote scanning as it does very well. Uh, so we have here in log activity and real time streaming, you know, Curator monitoring events. So we go to this bad guy and he's going to launch that uh, send map tool and he's going to point it to the 10.0.1.4 which is the IP address of the Altoro application and he's going to run that scan and he's going to find a bunch of uh, vulnerabilities and he's going to detect that there's also a SQL injection and a host of other Vulnerability. So he armed with that information. Now he needs to find how can I get some credentials to log in into that application to exploit later that SQL injection. But as we said before, Curator, look at that, light ups like a Christmas tree, detecting all those remote scanning activities that our XGS appliance uh, detected that uh, all that suspicious activity. I scans the network and he finds a, a, a machine, the good guy machine on this particular address and it's going to detect that there are some remote procedural call vulnerabilities that he knows he can exploit by sending a malicious PDF file that will give him control of the machine. Let's do that next. Here at the bad guy machine, we are going to scan, I, and I have it in here because I tried this before, we're going to scan that good guy's machine and find out how can I exploit that particular machine? What vulnerabilities exist on that one? Scan finished, and if we scroll up, we should be able to find Yep, and there is plenty of RPCs vulnerabilities. So now that the guy is gonna actually send that uh, malicious email uh, to the good guy. So the good guy, we are here on, on this machine, particular machine, 
Notice we're going to show that he doesn't have Apex yet, uh, so he's unprotected. He only has antivirus in here. So if we click here on all programs, we'll see that uh, the trustier Apex or trustier end protection, endpoint protection is not here. So he actually is going to go into the into his browser, into his uh, uh, mail uh, client, can be any mail client, uh, and he's going to actually he received this email, he was socially engineered to click in this uh, special bonus PDF file. And you know that when properly done, spear phishing is typically effective 8 out of uh, 10 times, uh, 10 tries. So the guy is going to click on that uh, special bonus PDF. And we see that the antivirus didn't find anything peculiar in it. that the bad guy who launched uh, Dark Comet, uh, this application that is a remote access tool, uh, actually, you know, bings, it uh, indicates that the, 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 the suspect click on it. And now by just uh, right clicking onto the application, he's going to open the console for or the control center for that comet and this machine is his he can do whatever he wants with it he can uh, execute files look for passwords uh, do uh, uh, keyloggers uh, whatever he wants to do he can and just to prove the point what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be uh, clicking in what this uh, guy's sense of humor called phone functions and uh, this phone manager Again, he can turn the camera on, the microphone, whatever he wants to do. But in here, what we're going to be doing is that we're just going to hide the the desktop of the of the actual machine. And so, if we go back to the uh, good guy, we see that obviously he has like anybody else a desktop with icons in here. But bad guy is actually uh, with those fun functions is going to hide that desktop. So by Clicking in there, if we go to the good guy screen, we'll see that he doesn't have those uh, icons. And in fact, if we go back here and we show the desktop, we're going to see that those uh, icons come back. Just, just to prove the point that he has full control over the machine. And by doing so with a keylogger or you're simply watching what he does on the screen, he got the credentials to the Altoro system that he wanted to uh, to get